So um, now it is my pleasure to introduce uh, the mayor of Los Angeles, Eric Garcetti. Mayor Garcetti, as you all know, is just the kind of mayor and leader we need in America. One that is passionate about building the next generation of smart cities, all with the goal of improving the daily lives of citizens, providing them more access to opportunity, and building a better future for themselves and their families. Mayor Garcetti has been a true leader also when it comes to reimagining city governments and how they provide even the most basic services. As one example, the mayor's operations innovation team has taken on a huge mission that Governor O'Malley mentioned earlier uh, to improve all aspects of how LA is managed and run. In fact, um, Michael O, the chief procurement officer, uh, the position for CPO was created out of the operations innovation team. We're also thankful to the mayor for his leadership and in making LA a part of the, uh, this overall initiative as well and taking the lead. So with that, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you Mayor Eric Garcetti. Thank you so much, Raj. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Ready to stand up and stretch for a second? Well, well, come on, everybody, stand up for a moment. You guys have been sitting forever. Just get the blood flowing, you know, high fives all around. You can do... All right, now you can sit. That's good. I, I'm always a big believer when people get talked to or talked at that we stop thinking. Um, studies show about if you're lucky, an eight-minute... Uh, concentration period, other ones three minutes before we start hitting our phones. If I don't earn it, please turn to your phones. But uh, <laughs> I want to thank um, all the folks who have taken time out of their day, especially those from the city family. I see Patty from Macias office here and um, John Reamer, who's our, from our public works office as well. Um, real leaders who continue to be a part of making Los Angeles, uh, we hope, an example for cities everywhere in this country and in the world. And I also want to thank, um, I know he's governor, but will always be Mayor O'Malley to me, because when I became mayor, I looked for the greatest mayors in American history, in our recent history, who I could emulate, learn from. And that was a, a small handful. It was Mayor O'Malley and Bloomberg and Hickenlooper. And so much of what I sought to be and to emulate and to learn from uh, was from this great mayor, um, who really took American uh, political science up to the next level. Um, it's funny, I studied what's called politics in England. They call it politics because they don't believe there's any science to it at all. And they probably were right for many years when we pretended that there was a political science. These days, I do think that there is administrative and political and civic science. And uh, this is, as I was just telling him privately, one of the godfathers of all of it. So thank you so much, uh, Mayor Governor O'Malley, for being here and taking time. Let's give him another round of applause as well. Where did Shelly go? Where, where's Shelly now? Did Shelly disappear? There's Shelly. I also want to thank Shelly Kapoor Collins, uh, dear friend. I would come just because you said come, but uh, somebody who has been a supporter and a friend and an innovator. Uh, I want to thank Megan Metzger as well. Um, and thank to my team uh, that has been a part of changing the way we do things in Los Angeles. Look, who's, who's not from Los Angeles? Raise your hand. All right. So for all of you, the rest of you, Angelinos, just uh, sit while I brag for a moment. This is an amazing city right now. This is the third largest economy in the world. And people always talk about GDP, but you know, the borders of a state are kind of artificial, uh, the accident of history. A state itself is um, similarly just part of what happened as people settled this land. But a city is an organic political entity. People can come to a city, can stay in a city, decide to grow in a city. And so as such, when I look at economic units, cities are the most interesting one to me. And recently, as we assess the top 50 cities in the world, Tokyo is the largest economy. New York is number two. And Los Angeles now, just behind New York, is the third largest economy in the world. 12 to 18 million people, depending on how you count us. Um, the most diverse collection of human beings ever in one place, not just in the world today, but in human history. We're 30-something countries, number one population outside the home country. 
when Justin Trudeau comes to town, he wants to hook up because the most Canadians outside of Canada live in Los Angeles, the most Mexicans outside of Mexico City. And in fact, Los Angeles is the second biggest Mexican city in the world. You go back to Mexico for number three. Um, of Thais, of Armenians, of Guatemalans, you can go down the list. And yet we have also diversity like my wife, who I joke comes from a foreign country, she's from Indiana. Uh, more Midwesterners here than probably in many places in the Midwest, uh, Southerners, folks who have migrated here. With the idea of this place that is this kind of incredible crossroads of the world, we could lay claim to being the northern capital of Latin America, the western capital of the United States, the eastern capital of the Pacific Rim. At a moment when the world is shifting to a Pacific century, one in which, for instance, just last year, Los Angeles to China displaced New York to London as the most significant international air corridor in the world, which has always been London uh, and New York since air travel started. And I don't think that will change in our lifetimes. Um, a place where we're breaking records in the port cargo that came through uh, the ports of LA and Long Beach, 40% of the goods that come into America now come through those twin ports. Our airport, the number one busiest airport in the country for origination and destination a place with more investment. You can see the cranes. Uh, you know, we, we joke, and uh, my predecessor used to say this too, but our, our city bird is the crane. You see everywhere down downtown and Koreatown and throughout the city, the record-breaking investments. Uh, we didn't have a football team a couple years ago. Now we got two, a new soccer stadium that was just built. We won kind of the gold medal of civic competitions, and we're going to bring back the Olympics for a third time and the Paralympics for a first time uh, to this city of angels a decade from now passed the largest infrastructure initiative in the nation's history at the local level. So we're going to build and or extend 15 transit lines in this county all at the same time so we can lose a number one crown I don't want to keep of being the worst traffic in America. Uh, tackling our homelessness and housing uh, problem, which just came from uh, a meeting of homeless housing providers from around the country who said, you know, what you are, are doing here is the bravest and most courageous uh, spend anywhere in the country to really try to end homelessness. And we saw the first good news in nine years as we counted our homeless just last week and had a reduction of 5% for the first time after nine years of steady growth. We look at these things not just because we want a laundry list of great things to talk about in a city, but because, as Aristotle once said, the city came into being to preserve life, but it exists for the good life. In fact, on top Los Angeles City Hall, in a ballroom named after our greatest mayor, Tom Bradley, that is written on the walls. And what he meant, Aristotle, when he wrote that in politics, was we come to cities to be safe and secure, but the end goal is not that. It is to find and to define what the good life is for each one of us. We work on systems like procurement. We rethink traffic and transportation networks, not because they are an end, but because they are the means to finding a wider circle that we can draw if the traffic isn't so bad of who we might date and fall in love with. We do that because we might be able to go to a concert that will inspire us or a play that will change our thinking because we aren't stuck in that traffic. We look at the time we spend with our families the years we're expected to live through the health indicators that we measure. All of those things come back to a very human place. And so I think a lot of people hear about procurement, hear about city operations, and they think it's the least sexy thing you could possibly talk about. For me, it is the most sexy. It is something that gets to the core of who we are and what we hunger for. We looked five years ago, or a little under five years ago when I became mayor, at the operations of a city. I'm sure that uh, Governor O'Malley had the same frustration that I often had before an editorial board, let's say during a recession. Okay, your receipts are down, what are you gonna cut? Tell me the programs you're gonna cut. As if that was the only option for government. Just in good years, add, and bad years, slash. Nobody ever asked me the question, how are you gonna govern better? How are you gonna make more money? How are you gonna be more efficient? No editorial board has ever asked me that. And yet it's the same dollars. A dollar saved is a dollar you can spend or a dollar you don't have to cut. And so when we looked at operations and innovation, I created a new mayor's office of budget and innovation. Miguel Sangalang is my deputy mayor of that office. And it was kind of like having a McKinsey, or if anybody's not from McKinsey, pick your management consultant, uh, in-house in the city, which many mayors had started to do. But we married it also with our budgeting process. So it wasn't just a place that came up with ideas in a vacuum, but it was also intimately tied with how we would create our budgets to come up with things like how do we put forward um, a competitive streak in city employees, 
a million dollars not spoken for in the budget that goes to whoever has the best ideas. And then people would compete and bring almost like an X Prize their ideas. Not all of them get funded, but like in the X Prize, many of them get implemented even if you don't get the funding because you change how people think uh, in the ways that we approach what we do. And one of the things, uh, thanks to Bloomberg Philanthropies and others, that we are funded, um, we have a, a great partnership here. I see Michael's here from uh, uh, the business community that also helped fund us looking at operations and innovation within city government. And there were three things that we sought to tackle. What do we pay in liability? Uh, what is our real estate portfolio? And how are we buying things? Because city governments at the end pay people and buy things. And then we do stuff with those two things together. The stuff we buy and the people we have, that's the magic of city government. Um, some of them have guns and tasers. Some of them have hoses and fire trucks. Some of them have um, you know, uh, medical equipment and others help us with books and our libraries. But that is essentially what we do. We buy things and we pay people to use those things to enrich our lives. And we noticed that one of the things we were doing was across all the 37 departments of the city of Los Angeles, which includes that biggest port in America, the largest municipal utility in America, the second largest police force in America, that we were doing these in silos, that we weren't talking to each other. And we didn't have a chief procurement officer, one of the recommendations. And we are so lucky to get Michael O to come from New York City, one of the nicest people in the world, and one of the most talented uh, procurement officials anywhere. Uh, we lost from our Los Angeles County uh, an amazing health director to New York. And I talked to Mayor de Blasio, and I said, but we're getting, we're going to trade. Uh, we got a New Yorker who came to L.A. and Michael, they got an extraordinary Angelino who went to New York. And it really, uh, I think, was, it was a great trade. Uh, both cities benefited. And having Michael come in to look at identifying cost savings, increasing transparency, reducing contracting time, and knitting together the brilliant people already in departments to share, as Governor O'Malley said, uh, to crowdsource intelligence together, to really hear those best practices from one another. When Governor Malley spoke, he mentioned that everybody wants to be second, and you're right, that usually is what people want to do. But I've tried to create something in Los Angeles, which is there's an added advantage to being first. And I've said to any tech company, any innovator, come to LA and test it here first. Because you're right, maybe you get the wisdom as the second ones of what was created with someone, but it might not be as specific to your city than if you're the very first. So one of the things I'd encourage all of you to do, I'll give you a very trite example. It sounds trite now, it was revolutionary at the time. We were the first big city in America to migrate our email to the cloud, right? Like, big whoop. But remember when we all had our own email on our own computers and our own servers? Well, in the city of Los Angeles, that they were guarded by interns. Battery acid was dripping in our uh, data centers. We were uh, still programming in Cobalt and Fortran and languages that weren't used anymore. And everybody's like, you can't take that away from us. It's not secure to give it to Microsoft or Google. We can guard it here. What do you want us to ride to, to work on donkeys next? This is just unacceptable and we won't do it. But we put it out to bid. Google won that. And now why it sounds trite is like, who doesn't have their email uh, in the cloud and some enterprise? Of course, we know the cost savings, we know the security, but by going first with Google, we became part of an intimate team working with them to see if that enterprise could better answer and talk to city governments. And I think private sector screws up as much as public sector when it comes to that interaction. We don't have enough interpreters in between. We have people who understand the needs of the private sector and when private sector is innovating, they're like, just stand back. And if you're lucky from the public sector, we will let you use this revolutionary thing, whether it's Uber and Lyft and Airbnb, whether it's technology that's for the private marketplace. They'll say, yeah, you can use it too. But they don't usually listen to the public sector's needs. Vice versa, the public sector fears that private sector. And inevitably, sooner or later, sometimes it takes a couple months, sometimes it takes a couple years, regulation and interaction has to occur. There has to be a give and take between those entities so that we can have better products and they can open up those markets and they can understand the public sector isn't exactly the same as the private sector in terms of our needs, our transparency, our collaboration, um, our laws. <laughs> uh, those things affect the products that are out there. So you see a great product like, do anybody ever ridden a bird? In here? Anybody know what a bird? Not like literally a bird, but okay, we've got a couple hipsters over here. Um, birds are these new electric scooters uh, that one day just showed up in Santa Monica. 
People looked at them on the street. I remember when I saw the first one, I'm like, somebody left a scooter just here. That's going to get stolen. But it wouldn't move. It's locked. You get an app. You have to be 18 or over. over. They recommend you have a, a helmet. Hopefully, folks are using, using helmets if you've tried it. And um, they can go you know, 15, 20, 30 miles an hour, and they've become a new vehicle on our streets. If the growth rate that they have today continues for the next two years, there will be as many uh, bird rides in two years from now as there are Uber rides every year right now in this city. So this thing, they did zero advertising, they put it out there, but suddenly it was blocking sidewalks, cars didn't know what to do because we don't really drive ever looking at anything besides our lane and our cell phones, unfortunately. Um, we aren't you know, intelligent drivers, we aren't intelligent walkers. It's a very dangerous thing, all kidding aside, people are dying in this city and other places because we think that crosswalks protect us, we think that lanes protect us, we think we can look at phones. But anyway, we had an adjustment, and now they're coming into the city of Los Angeles as well. And instead of trying to chase them off, early on, we're sitting down with them and saying, how can we not say no, but say yes and figure out a way, because these actually do take rides off the street. They will reduce pollution in the city, which has reduced it by 90%, but still has the worst air quality in the country on average. And what can we do to help be part of that solution? It's the same thing within our enterprises. What can we do, because we're usually pitched where somebody has the product already and they're saying, will you take it? Big cities have the privilege usually of being market leaders and also loss leaders for the companies. LA, and I encourage you to come here and try your stuff for cheap or for free with us and not charge us full freight, but we will go first with you in order to get the lessons and then say, hey, we're doing it in LA. We do that all the time. We leverage each other, okay? If it's already a fully formed product, we'll talk to you about retail, but otherwise we want wholesale, free, or heavily reduced. And when we use those things and we look at them, we figure out a way to be innovators together and to say that cities can turn quickly, they can innovate. And I truly believe that in my heart, that I do not buy the cliche that private sector moves quickly and public sector moves slowly. This isn't about procurement, but you know, when I became mayor, uh, we have about 300 positions that I appoint commissioners, citizen commissioners who oversee our city departments with real authority. Um, for the first time I looked at them, I said, this is not equal, and I thanked a lot of really well-qualified, long-serving men, and for the first time we made it 50, I think 2% now women, commissioners, and there's no all-male boards in any of our commissions or boards, and over half of our commissioners are now women. Now, thank you. I point to that because the private sector is bellyaching about trying to get 15% of C-suite executives and board members. And I go to them and I say, if we did that in six months in the public sector, don't tell me in the private sector you can't do it if you want to, because you don't have the, certain, the kind of rules and regulations that we do. And I think it's the same thing when it comes to procurement. We should be pretty fearless about the innovation that we want to bring to how we do things. And LA is uh, enabling that and empowering that. We're doing that in so many collaborative ways. We're sharing our data. We've been the number one open data city in America for four out of the last five years, and we were unranked before I was mayor, the number one digital city in America. And Bloomberg Philanthropies, we were the first and only city to win this year's gold award for the best run city in America. Uh, hundreds of cities applied for it. There's about 80 finalists, I think another eight won silver, and Los Angeles was the only one to, to win gold. I don't say that to brag, I say that because it will never be a headline, similar to the unsexy things that you do, but Mayor O'Malley, Governor O'Malley, and I know it's those moments when people come in as third parties and assess what you're doing and decide whether you're doing a good job that you really know you're headed in the right direction or not. And that's empowered us to do everything, like fire stat, reducing our response times. Uh, we have uh, firefighters who are now using an app before even their station rings to tell them to roll out, where they can see that there is a need for a medical emergency or a fire. Um, clean stat. Um, see, we, we model everything on what you do. It's just stat, you know, it's O'Malley stat, it's uh, <laughs> Garcetti stat. But uh, clean stat, we were the first city in the country to drive every block of every street of every neighborhood in this huge sprawling city of 470 square miles and rate them, the cleanliness, either a three very dirty, two somewhat dirty, one clean, and put that out to the public so they can click on their own street, say, why aren't you cleaning up my three or even my two street? And the first year we went from 370 miles that were ranked three to 91 miles simply by being more precise with what we do. So that's why I'm excited in procurement to use that same approach to what we can do in the city of Los Angeles, to, dry, to, to be able to draw a straight line much smoother and much more quickly um, for what we seek to do and who we will be. 
We spend a lot of time in Los Angeles innovating because it's the right thing to do. It helps empower the democracy, but it's also the fiscally responsible thing to do as well. We build kind of from the bottom up. And um, the last thing I'll say is none of this works if you don't empower this, not just as a team or a section of your departments or your city, but if you don't imbue it as a value. Let's desegregate the leadership of this to make sure that everybody understands that procurement is his or her responsibility, that saving money when we buy things, that innovating is their not only responsibility, but their opportunity. I've seen that time and time again. I give a little city hall pin with a light on it to rank and file employees who come up with great innovations in the city. We had um, somebody who was a surveyor and the Los Angeles River, you may not know if you're from out of town, but we do have a river here. It's actually why downtown is here and not on the coast, even though we're a coastal city. Every other coastal city, like the tall buildings are by the ocean. Here it's because this river that you can, if you look out that window, you can kind of see it looks like a big concrete ditch. Uh, think of Terminator 2 or, or Grease Lightning, you know, that's where that all happened. But the LA River we are revitalizing and we're putting a bike path along the entire contiguous river. It's a river that's incredibly powerful. It falls half the uh, fall of the Mississippi River in just 51 miles, what the Mississippi takes 2,000 miles to do. So when it rains here, it goes from almost nothing to everything. It's overwhelming, and that's why it has concrete banks now that we're trying to liberate. But this one, uh, this one surveyor said to do the mile markers for this new bike path in the hot heat would have taken me with traditional equipment four or five weeks uh, with a team of three or four people. And instead, he got on his bicycle, and using Google Maps and an app, he was able to knock it out himself in about a week's time. And we gave him that award because not only was that good for that project, it freed up our work to do uh, other things, it changed how we're going to be doing our surveying in the city everywhere. Um, so that one person's innovation, by allowing that space to open up, uh, will revolutionize the time and the work that we can get done out of our surveyors in the entire city. So this is the future that we seek to build. When we seek to innovate, uh, whether it's on procurement, whether it's how we look at our properties, whether it's how we address liability, or we just try to um, reinvigorate democracy. Um, and I'll close where I began. I think that people did come to cities as the original political entity. In fact, politics and city have the same Greek root, polis. Um, so people came to the city with a sense that I wanted to participate in democracy. But the bigger and bigger that we've grown, We've turned city governments into fortresses, both for the people inside them and the people that they serve. And the more that we can democratize that, break down those walls, and remind people that this is about helping you find that good life, then what we buy, what we do, what we spend, what we share, will be that much richer and will be that much deeper. Um, and I'm so grateful for this opportunity to share a little bit about what LA is doing and wish you nothing but the best of luck as we learn from each other and create that tomorrow. Thank you. I think so. Yeah, I have time for a couple questions before. Sure. Yes. Two emojis from LADWP. Mayor yes. Garcetti, can you share your vision about um, potentially future procurement system to unite your 37 <laughs> agencies together? Well, I'm sure Michael has good answers to that. You want to come forward, Mike? Come on, Michael. What we've done is, I mean, first and foremost, the other thing you might not know about Los Angeles is we have 32 of those departments that kind of work under our city's general fund. And then we've got other departments that are semi-independent. So we have a Department of Water and Power that's its own utility, as I mentioned, the largest municipal utility in the country. We've got our own airport, our own port. We've got a housing authority. So it becomes very difficult to how we cross those lines because people get very territorial. And they have legitimate fear that if I go to the you know, if we become part of the Borg and we get absorbed by the mothership, uh, will they still really care about what DWP's needs are? Very different than others. But what I envision is a city in which if DWP is kicking ass, doing something better than everybody else, we get in line and figure out how to follow. Vice versa, we are honest at places like DWP. What aren't we doing still as well? And is there a department we can be learning from and share that together? But Michael, you want to detail? Sure. Uh, 
And I just want to say that I am going to be addressing this topic later on today. Uh, so we'll go a little bit more into detail. But I think ex it's exactly that, that we want to collaborate with each other, learn from each other. And you know, the, the obvious thing is to say, let's centralize everything. But I don't think that's the right approach, especially in a city like LA. Um, and we'll go into that a little bit uh, in a little bit more detail. But I just wanted to thank uh, Mayor Garcetti for the opportunity to even share that vision and uh, align with his vision for a well-run city, right, for a prosperous city. And thank you again, Mr. Mayor. And one last thing I'll say on this is, is I think in the past, that's, that's actually a good metaphor, um, and Governor O'Malley spoke about this too, is in, in the past you needed to have probably one big system bring everybody in, but technology doesn't work that way anymore. Like think about that with GIS systems, right? In the city of LA, we have proprietary and guarded GIS systems that our engineering bureau has, that our sanitation has, our Department of City Planning has, and yet GIS now, there was, there was also this, this fantasy, couldn't we just get one GIS that they'd all be in? And they're all worried, no, it wouldn't exactly be what I needed. Now there's interpreters that can share that GIS information, and pull it so you can keep your window, but it is actually talking all day long to those two other systems. I think it's gonna be the same with procurement. How can we let people have what they need so you never lose the customization of your own department, but that there's, Something that alerts you that pencils are, you know, no, we always use pencils. Nobody buys pencils anymore, but let's just pen. Pencils are being bought cheaper, you know, by another department. They've got a good in. We're working with the community college district or whomever to get furniture. And, uh, you know, even across cities, I brought together uh, now, I think we're up to more than 100 cities in the Western United States that are put out an RFI for electric vehicles. So we could indicate to a market that, hey, we're going to, instead of looking at a few hundred vehicles for us, we're looking at 100,000 vehicles over the next decade in these cities. So GM, uh, Nissan, whoever, start building these uh, with the specs that we need so that you can find those best case uh, scenario stories, those innovations and better places to get things while still maintaining your autonomy. He's going to be really much more interesting, so I, I look forward to it. It's a high bar. I said he's the nicest guy in the world, so test him. Anyway, thank you all so very much. Appreciate it.